I would like us to open our Bibles this morning to the book of Hebrews chapter 12. It's a scripture that we read last week, and I would also like us to read it again, because I want to continue to share in the same spirit. I don't know about you, but the Lord has spoken clearly this morning, huh? The Lord has spoken, he's ministered to us. I was saying to my wife, I'm ready to go home now. You know, because it's so, there's no way to describe when we're in the presence of the Lord. And we're praying for one another, praying for the young people. They need our support in many ways. So Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, it says, let us run. I know, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning his shame, and sat down at the right hand throne of God. Hallelujah. Hmm? So let us fix our eyes on Jesus. And this is what we were sharing last week, and this is what I would just want to continue to share about, uh, fixing our eyes on Jesus. He says there he is the author and he is the perfecter of our faith. And it's interesting that even for Jesus when he was on the earth, there was temptation for him to take his eyes off the plan of his father, the plan he had come to accomplish, and fix his eyes on many things. But somehow, the father kept him, fixed his plans, and he enjoyed, the Bible says here, the cross, scorning his shame, knowing that beyond the cross, the church will be born. And I believe that when we continue to fix our eyes on Jesus, he takes care of us. His plan becomes clearer. His plan becomes more manifest. It's a bit sad, but that's reality. Men can disappoint you. Who's ever been disappointed by men? Huh? People can disappoint you. Perhaps they don't mean to. Perhaps in many ways it was not their intention. But one thing for sure, the Lord is always with us. When we want to serve him with all of our hearts and we're sincere, the Lord is with us. And I can say clearly this morning, the Lord will never, never disappoint you when you put your life in his hands. Perhaps sometimes things don't work the way we think they should work, when they should work, but the plan of God is perfect. Do you know that the Lord is never late? Eh? The Lord is never late. Eh? The Lord is always on time. Eh? And the Bible says he makes everything beautiful in his time. Sometimes you and I, we question, we want things to happen a certain way. Why are they not happening that way at that moment? But let me tell you, when we find our rest in the Lord, we will discover that the ways of the Lord and the timing of the Lord is best. So he says that we are to fix our eyes on Jesus. And this morning I want to share on the story of Joseph. So I would like to ask you to open your Bibles with me to the book of Genesis chapter 37. How many of us know the story of Joseph? Hmm? The story of Joseph, he was one of the sons of? Have you got that one? He was one of the sons of Jacob. Uh, how many sons Jacob has? Are you sure? Okay. One of the sons of Jacob. And uh, we are going to read just a few scriptures, then we'll continue to share. Chapter 37. Let's read from verse 2. This is the account of Jacob. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flocks with his brothers, the sons of Bilhah, the sons of Zilpha, his father's wives, and he brought their father a bad report about them. Now Israel, Israel is the same as who? Jacob. Loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age. And he made a richly ornamented robe for him but when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and they could never speak a kind word to him. Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even all the more. Sometimes the dreams we have from the Lord will get us into trouble. Eh? And he said to them, listen to this, I had a dream. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright. While your sheaves gathered around mine, and they bowed down to it. His brother said to him, Do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream that he had said. I think Richard Mavengano could have used this one this morning. 
Uh, when you invest in the ones with the dream, they will rule over you. And they hated him more because of his dreams. And in verse 9, then he had another dream. And he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream. And this time, the sun, the moon, and the 11 stars were bowing down to me. When he told his father as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, What is this kind of dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? And his brothers were jealous of him. But somehow his father kept this matter in heart. What a life, eh? eh? Can you imagine this 17-year-old going to his brothers, going to his father, who was quite a spiritual man at that time, and sharing what kind of dream he was having, expecting to get some encouragement. How many of us sometimes you go to your family and you expect some encouragement? So I'm not the only one. And they turn around and say, what is your problem? You actually are 17 years old, and you think that one day you will rule over us. Uh, and as young people would say, you must be kidding. And he thought he'd go to his father. And he said, Father, you know, I've been having these dreams, and now I have a second dream. And his father said, now, 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 listen to me. You think that your mother and I and your brothers one day will bow down on the ground before you. But somehow Jacob, because as we know who Jacob was, he kept this matter in his heart. What am I saying this morning is that God will speak his word to us. God will bring plans in our lives. I'm not talking about plans for our flesh, but I'm talking about plans to serve the Lord. Sometimes they're a little bit out of the ordinary. Eh? Sometimes they don't fit into the mold, but yet they're burning within our hearts. One thing I'll encourage you is that when you are faithful to the Lord, the Lord, in his time, he makes everything beautiful. You know, when we serve the Lord, we don't have to struggle we don't have to force, we don't have to try to manipulate, we don't have to jostle, but you know the Bible says a man's gift makes room for him. So if the Lord has called you, the Lord has gifted you, the Lord has anointed you, God himself will make sure you need to be where you need to be. And I'll say one thing, nobody can stop you from serving the Lord. No situation can stop you from serving the Lord when the plan of God is in your heart. You know the story goes on. And he says that, you know, Joseph used to be left at home and his brothers would go and look after the flocks. And one day the brothers were sent and Jacob wanted to get an idea how the flocks were doing. So he sent Joseph and he said, go and have a look and see how the flocks are doing, how your brothers are doing out there. And the Bible says that the brothers saw Joseph coming from afar. And one of them says, here comes the dreamer. Uh, you see how much, I wanted to say uh, sibling rivalry there was, but you see how much hatred there was. They didn't even say, here comes our youngest brother. He says, here comes that dreamer. Uh, you know, there's one uh, version, you know, that says, well, it's in the Bible version, you know. Uh, here comes this guy, he's just dreaming. Uh, he's just dreaming. But they were jealous of the dream somehow. And then they decided, you know what? This young man of 17 and his dreams, we've had enough of him. Eh? We've had enough of him. And now he has come, sent by the father. Let's take him eh? and let us kill him. So you understand the jealousy there was quite intense. Eh? If you're going to come to a point where you want to kill your own brother, then there is something happening. And they said, let's kill him. Eh? Let's kill him. And when we kill him, we throw him into a well and we'll say he was eaten by wild animals uh, that were very ferocious and our father will believe this story. But the oldest brother called Reuben, he had a little bit more sense. He said, no, 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 we, we're, not, we're, not, we're not going to kill him. Let's just put him in the cistern overnight. And the Bible says Reuben had a plan to go and rescue him at some other time. It's amazing that even when people are against the plan of the Lord, the, as the scriptures say, the Lord confuses the enemy. <laughs> Uh, the Lord brings confusion uh, when something is, is against his plan. Uh, to cut a long story short, whilst they threw him into that cistern, a well without water, suddenly they saw some Ishmaelites, and one of them thought, no, 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 no. We're not just going to kill him. Let's make some money. Uh, let's make some money out of this. Here are some Ishmaelites. They are coming, and they are going to Egypt, 
Let's sell this guy with all his dreams. You know, I'm not too sure of the value of things those days, but my Bible says they sold him for 200 grams of silver. So if there's any miner, you can help me what that is worth, you know. It doesn't sound like it's worth much to me. Uh, but they took him and they sold him, you know. And then they took his uh, uh, coat, that ornamented coat that his father had made for him. And they put blood of an animal to tell his father, uh, that one with dreams is now dead. And it's very interesting what it says here. You know, we read this as a story. But let's never forget that this, this is something that happened. Eh? We know the beginning and we know the end. But can you imagine this poor 17-year-old going through all this, facing the opposition, being rejected by his own brothers, being sold by his own brothers just because he had dreams? What would you do? Eh? I think some of you would go back to the Lord and say, Lord, please take your dream. Because I and my brothers and my father, we were well without the dream. Now you put this dream, things are not going well. So please, Lord, here's the dream. Yeah. You know, it always reminds me of that scripture in Timothy. It says that those who want to live godly life will be persecuted. And uh, the worst persecution, let me tell you, is not from out there, it's persecution from within. And the Bible says, you know, a man is not a prophet of honor in his own. In his own? Tribe. <laughs> Uh, in his own family, in his own town, another version says. He's not a prophet of honor. And he says that, you know, the most opposition will come from the members of his household. Now, I'm not talking about persecution that comes to us because we've done things that are unwise. But I'm talking about persecution that comes because we have a plan, we have a vision to serve the Lord. And our brother Richard Mavengano was so true that when God births a vision, gives us a plan, the enemy is not at rest. He'll want somehow to disturb what has been put. I don't know about you, but I think there was major rejection going on in Joseph's life. What do you think? Major rejection, because you really look to your family for the support, but they are the ones selling you, <laughs> eh? trying to get rid of you, even wanting to kill you. And then it says something very interesting here. It says that these Ishmaelites, when they got to Egypt, they also thought, you know what, we bought him, we're not going to keep him, we're also going to make some money. So let's go into Pharaoh's household, and they sold him to Potiphar. And he was brought into Pharaoh's household, sold to Potiphar, and the Bible says that because Joseph, you know, he kept his heart pure, the Lord was with him in everything that he did. And that's what I want us to read now in Genesis chapter 39. Whenever you go through something, my brother, my sister, I want to encourage you, keep a heart that is pure before the Lord, and the Lord will take care of you. And in chapter 39... Verse 1, now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. Potiphar, an Egyptian, who was one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him there. Hey, listen to verse 2. The Lord was with Joseph. Hallelujah. Eh? My brother, my sister, when you are serving God, even if there is opposition from the family, from wherever, but you keep your heart pure, you set your, fix your eyes on Jesus, you fix your eyes on the plan of God, God is with you. Uh, the Lord was with Joseph, and he prospered, and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord gave him success in everything that Joseph did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. So not only the Lord was with him, but even the guy who did not know about the plan of God could testify that the Lord is with this man. Now, even Potiphar could say, the Lord is with Joseph. I repeat again, never, never must we fix our eyes on men, but fix our eyes on the Lord. And whatever we do, we must never do for the approval of men, but we must do because of our love for Jesus Christ. We must do because we love God. That's where comes our reward from. And you can see in whatever Joseph did, you know, not only the, the, he did it well, but there was a favor from the Lord. Unfortunately, whilst he was working there, a situation happened, you can read at home, and he found himself being imprisoned. I don't know if I was Joseph at this time. Perhaps, without the grace of the Lord, I would have really had a few questions for the Lord. I would have really said, Lord, you've put this dream. My brother sold me. The Ishmaelites sold me. Now Potiphar put me in prison. Please, Lord. 
This dream said that the guys will bow down before me, but how is it going to work? I'm in prison. And he says it was not just a prison, but it was a prison that was specifically for those from the palace. And in the prison, he was with the cup, cup bearer, and in the prison, he was with the baker, so he was with a few skellywags there. You know, I always try to put that into my natural, little mind, to think how as Joseph would I feel at that time. Now, it's easy for us to say scriptures, the Lord is with you. Ah, shalom. Ah, the Lord was with him. The Lord blessed him. The Lord's hand was upon him. But at this time, the guy, he probably thinks he'll never see his family again. Because they wanted nothing to do with his dreams. And his brother sold him. And his father thinks he's dead. Because the, the Bible says even the father was so broken hearted to find that now his son is no more. So as far as the family was concerned, he was no more. Do you understand? They didn't send him an Instagram message. Eh? They didn't send him a WhatsApp. There was no group family WhatsApp where Joseph in prison could go to a corner and say, how is it going there with the family? Eh? Is, it, is it Reuben's birthday? Is it Simeon's birthday? Is it Judah's wedding anniversary? He was alone. And in their times, my brothers and sisters, the plan of God will take you things where you feel alone. And God's dealings come to your life and you feel alone. Didn't that's what Jesus went through? Eh? When the other three disciples that they were supposed to be praying with him were sleeping, and he said, if it were possible, Lord, if it were possible, let this cup of suffering pass. And there's a suffering when you're alone. Eh? Eh? I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, that identification that we normally talk about to the work of the cross, eh, that suffering, that death, there are times when you go through it, no one can be with you, but you need to go through it. Eh? Only you can go through it. But praise God. You keep your heart pure. The grace of God is there for you. The grace of God is there for you. And I believe God was with him because in his heart somehow he was not carrying all the excess luggage. Anyhow, when he was in prison, I told you he meets these two guys and they have dreams. And somehow he manages to interpret the dreams. And he interprets to the one guy and he says, you know what? After a while, you're going to be restored and you're going to go and work back in Pharaoh's place, in the palace. And then he says something underneath. And he says, but please, when you go back to the palace, when you go back to Pharaoh, remember me. I'm not going to read you, read at home. But the Bible says, as soon as the guy was released and restored, he forgot all about Joseph. I think if I were Joseph, I would also have charged money for the dream. Like everybody was making money, was selling him, you know? But he says the guy remembered him no more. Huh? Who's ever faced rejection? Oh, don't lift your hand. <laughs> uh, all of us, one way or the other. Huh? First rejection, you know, from the family, from the boss, from people that we trusted, from people that we thought would be of support to us. Huh? But somehow they were never there. In fact, sometimes they even took your good deeds and used them against you. Or took the words that you said to help them and use them against you. Eh? And this is the place where he was in now. Rejected, in prison. Hmm? I often think of this story and say, God, what a heart. Eh? What a heart this guy must have had. Eh? Doesn't tell us, but I'm sure. Somehow, every day, he must have thought of those dreams. And what they've landed him into. Uh, must have thought at some point. And somehow God gave him the grace to soldier on and to persevere. And when you read in chapter 41, it says that, um, and in fact, chapter 40, you will see when you read at home, it, it also says, but the Lord was with Joseph. Hallelujah. Better nobody be with you, but the Lord be with you. <laughs> than everybody to be with you and the Lord is not with you. Uh, it says, Many times, we, I mean, you can read at home, the Lord was with Joseph. It's as if the Lord was watching over him. It makes me realize that even in my mistakes that I've made, when my heart is sincere, the Lord is with me and he protects me. Yeah. Huh? He protects me. He's with me. And I make mistakes like you make mistakes. But the Lord is with me. The Lord is with us, my brothers and sisters. I think that's a very timely word for, timely word for Zimbabweans. The Lord is with you. Hmm? 
Uh, not you, George, from Mauritius, but here. <laughs> eh? There, there's other things there. But the Lord is with you. You might have that question and that situation and that relationship issue, but in the midst of it, question where is your heart? Because if your heart is in the right place, then God will give you the grace to go through. You know, there's some people, don't lift your hand, because I don't think you are there, but there's some people sometimes even in their marital issue, they can have a little moment where they think, oh dear, what did I do? <laughs> don't lift your hand. Don't. <laughs> eh? They think, oh Lord, what? I never knew. I just saw the dimples and all the other things, but <laughs> I never knew this character was there. Do you know that character? You don't know that character? Eh? I never knew, Lord. Eh? I remember we used to joke a long time ago. I used to say, why didn't someone explain a few things to me before I got married, before I had children? But you know, there are things that nobody can explain. You need to go through them. That's how maturity comes. That's how you grow. Eh? You know, you can tell me all your wonderful testimonies about your marriage, but man, it's me and her in one house. For us, for 27 years. And forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> eh? So you better know it's the plan of the Lord and fix your eyes on Jesus. You know what I like about that story we read about Abraham last week? He said that if he looked at Sarah and Sarah's dead womb, he'd have lost faith. But he didn't look at that. He looked at God said there's going to be a son. Eh? That's what kept him going. Fix his eyes on the Lord. Fix his eyes on the plan of the Lord. How often we rob ourselves of the joy of the Lord because we fix our eyes on somebody. Hmm? What if your best friend stops serving the Lord? Then what? Eh? What if your favorite aunt stops serving the Lord? Hmm? You know, sometimes as you work with people, you find things that have happened to people. I tell you, sometimes I have I've questions and think, Lord, why did that happen to that person? Why that relative did that? I don't understand. But one thing I want to encourage you today, in your situation, keep a pure heart and the Lord is with you. Hmm? The Lord is with you. Don't think of revenge. Hmm? The Bible says, vengeance belongs to the Lord. Don't think of retaliating. Yeah? Don't even say to yourself, you know, I don't know how to say this in English, you know, Don't, don't even say to the person, my brother, my sister, you are lucky because the gospel of the cross is in me. <laughs> if it wasn't the cross, my old man, <laughs> eh? I was trying to, you know, <laughs> eh? you are lucky because, you know, the, the gospel is where I'm served. Don't, that's not how we think. We, we close our mouth like a lamb led to a salt, that word, to a slaughter, he opened not his mouth. Ah, how my flesh likes to defend. How is your flesh? My flesh likes to defend. My flesh likes to explain. My flesh likes to justify. But no, when that road is in front of us, what do we do? Close our mouth like a lamb led to a slaughter. You identify with that suffering. You identify with that death because you know there's a vision. There's going to be a resurrection life. One last scripture and then we close. Let's go to Genesis chapter, we're still the story of Joseph, eh? chapter 45. This I've got to read because it really impacted my life. Because now there's another dream and the, the Pharaoh himself has a dream and he can't make head of it. But to cut a long story short, that dream Joseph manages to interpret it because only then that this guy had interpreted, remember that somewhere in prison, there's a guy who interpreted for me. You know, let's bring him. And they bring him and interpret, and there's going to be seven years of abundance in terms of food, and then seven years that will be lean. And Pharaoh is so impressed that he thinks, you know, you're such a wise guy, why don't you just take over and look after this whole program? It's nice, eh? To come from prison to govern. Hey, Gavena. <laughs> eh, from prison to Gavena. The Bible says, straight away he was promoted eh, to be the governor. 
and look after all this food security. Eh? Look after all this thing. How the Lord was with him. Eh? And then, now, there is famine in the whole region. And it affects where his father, his brothers, they are living. And now his brother Jacob, you know Jacob was always a man of plants. So he says, I've heard that there is grain in Egypt. Please guys, go and get some grain from there. And they come to get some grain. And guess who they have to be in audience with? Yeah? Who's the governor? Diani governor, man. Arutonga. Now they meet with Joseph. And it's amazing because they did not recognize him, but he recognized them. What would you do if you're Joseph? Come on, let's talk plainly here. What would you do? Come on, let's, 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 let's level here. What would you do? Thank you, Mrs. Quenda. Huh? Huh? Mrs. Quenda says, sort them out. <laughs> now I know some of you, because you're born again, baptized in water, Holy Ghost filled, you would say, hey guys, sit down here. Let me explain something. Let me take off this robe. Actually, I'm your brother Joseph. Remember, you hated me? <laughs> Remember, you were jealous about me? Remember, you threw me in the pit? Remember you, Ruben? You threw me in the pit? You remember? I've not forgotten. Remember, you sold me to the Ishmaelites? And by the way, they also sold me to Potiphar, and I was thrown in prison, but now I am here. Gati Tauri San, let's talk now. <laughs> eh? Or if you're even more spiritual, you go further and say, but because I'm born again, I forgive you. <laughs> but first of all, let me remind you, just for the record, all the things that you did to me. Uh, no, I'm sharing this so that you'll never do to Benjamin as well, my youngest brother. My heart is pure. I just want to know how evil you were, but I've forgiven you. Anyone identify? Huh? That's why Jesus said you forgive how many times? In other words, you keep forgiving. Huh? You don't be like someone I know who says, you know what? I've forgiven you, but don't, remember, don't forget that last Christmas you did the same thing. Eh? And when, when we were 10 years, you did the same thing. But you know, because I'm a Christian, I'm born again. I go to Selborne Park, I forgive you <laughs> with a brick in my hand. You know? But no, let's read something. Chapter 45, verse 1. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all his attendants, and he cried out, Have everyone leave my presence. So there was no one with Joseph. And now he made himself known to his brothers. That must have been a moment. Huh? And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him, and Pharaoh's household heard about it too. Huh? Why do you think Joseph was weeping? Who can tell me? Hmm? Do you think it was weeping of sadness? Ah, oh, yeah. See, Mrs. Quinder is very spiritual this morning. Uh, I think he was weeping because he saw that plan being fulfilled that day. He saw that plan being fulfilled that day. His brothers hadn't seen it yet. But for him, he remembered the dreams. He never forgot about the dreams. He never forgot what the Lord had said. Because now, remember, he's governor. In fact, in fact, by this time, Pharaoh has said to him, you have access to anything but my throne. Yeah, everything. So I don't know what we can call him now, prime minister. What, I don't know. Yeah, he, was, he had access to everything. He was ruler of everything. And in verse 3, Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. <laughs> Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer, obviously, yeah? because they were terrified at his presence. What did you do, guys? Come on. They couldn't even answer. Maybe there was time. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, ah. It's not me, it's him. He thought. Oh, you know. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come close. Oh, how they've gone far. Eh? When they had done so, he said once again, I'm your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. And now, do not be distressed. Eh? No stress. Eh? Do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here. Because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. What a heart. What a heart, my brothers and sisters. He says, for two years now there's been a famine in the land, 
And for the next five years, they will not be plowing and reaping. But God, listen to this, God, not the devil, not Ruben, but God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on the earth and to save your lives by great deliverance. May God help me to have a heart that's pure like that. Hmm? He says, I want you to know I'm your brother. Don't be distressed. Whatever happened, happened. Eh? But I want you to know that it was in the plan of God. Oof. I don't know what you feel, brothers, but that's a challenge. Eh? I want you to know that God sent me ahead. I would have said, Lord, but please, why didn't we go with an air bus, you know? You know? Go with an air-conditioned train or something. Why I had to go through the pit, to Port Far, to prison, and then back again. You could have done it without all that. You see, all of us, we have situations we go through. And I tell you, they're tough. Rejection, used, abused, whatever word you want to put in there. But somehow, my brothers and sisters, my encouragement this morning again, fix your eyes on Jesus, keep a pure heart. He says, God sent me ahead of you. And he cried, not because he was going to have a fight with them, but he cried because he was overwhelmed to see that plan come into fulfillment. Wouldn't you like to see the plan of God come to fulfillment? Eh? Just to say, God, you've done it. What I had to go through, Lord, meant nothing. What is important is what's happening today between me and my brothers. And the next question he says, is my father still alive? Is my father still alive? Please, you know. All of you come. Eh? Cut the long story short, they all came and lived with him. Eh? Me, if I was one of the brothers after he's forgiven us, I'd tell you I was full of joy. Telling all the other guys when we were picking, my brother is the governor. We are now going there. We are, we are in the palace with my brother. It must have been a challenge for the brothers to experience the heart of the Lord. You know, there's been times in my life where I've made mistakes. And I've gone somewhere expecting the judgment, expecting whatever. And when I feel the heart of the Lord, I am finished. In fact, I'll tell you something as we close this morning. You know the power of God's grace? It makes someone not want to live their life of sin. Do you understand my English? It makes them want to depart from their sin. Law will cause them to go more into their sin. But the heart of the Lord, the heart of grace will cause them not to want. And that's why Jesus said to that woman caught in adultery, go eh, and depart from your life of sin. I am challenged by the life of Joseph, personally, to think that man can go through that and at the end, all he sees is the plan of the Lord. I'm sure you are like me, you've had questions sometimes. Anyone? Uh, I'm with the right people? Sometimes questions, Lord, why this? Why that? Why I had to go through that? Why I had to face that? Sometimes you face something, you think, Lord, is this real of you? Is this how you really work? I don't see it in the Bible. But my brother, my sister, you understand? You don't understand. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Keep a pure heart. Don't fix your eyes on your brothers. Don't fix your eyes on Reuben. Don't fix your eyes on Egypt. Don't fix your eyes on Potiphar, the jailer, the cup bearer. Fix your eyes on Jesus. And just say, God sent me ahead. And now I'm here. Let's enjoy together the blessing of the Lord. Let's enjoy the blessing of the Lord. Shall we stand this morning? I think this morning the Lord has spoken so clear in our lives. So, so, so clear. It feels like to me we've had a full meal, eh? From the beginning of the service to the end of the service, I tell you the Lord has been ministering. And I'm praying this morning, my brothers and sisters, I, I want to be honest with you as I'm sharing about the story of Joseph. I was so challenged and I feel so challenged. Fix your eyes on the Lord and keep a pure heart. Fix your eyes on the Lord. There is nothing that holds people captive than unforgiveness. You know, unforgiveness, often, it works, how can I say, it works more terrible to the person who's not wanting to forgive than the person who, who desires to be forgiven. Do you understand? It holds you in prison. But may God give us grace to let go. The word forgive means let go. May God give us grace to let go. Lose. Hmm? Just lose. Just let go. Why? The Lord is with you. And the Lord will take care of you. 
In fact, I tell you, the Lord often will restore more than you, you had. And many will marvel at the blessing of the Lord. Anything in this world is not worthy fighting for. The only thing fighting for in this world is to keep our salvation and our relationship with the Lord. A shirt is not worth fighting for. A, a chair, a microphone, drumsticks, these things are not worthy fighting for. Lose, let them go, but fight for your salvation. Fight to enter heaven, to finish the race. That you fight for. Eh? That fight the good fight of faith. Fight for the salvation of your children. Fight for the salvation of your relatives. That's worth fighting for. Hallelujah. Are we together this morning? Amen. I think we can just worship the Lord before we go home. What do you think? Just one more time, just before we go. Father, this morning that is our prayer. That we would offer up our lives to you. And that there will be really a pleasing sacrifice. Lord, that you would help us to have a heart that is pure in everything and through everything. Lord, to fix our eyes on you. To know that you are the author and the perfect of our faith. No man can do anything for us in the spirit, Lord, as it were, unless it comes from you. That everything is from you. Everything is by you. Lord, sometimes there's even things you've allowed us to go through. Perhaps even today we don't see the significance. But help us, Lord, to stay faithful to your purposes. To stay faithful to your plan. And to know that one day we will have tears of joy when we see that vision being accomplished. We thank you and we bless you this morning, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.